We have talked about how sound waves travel out from their source in a sphere. The waves are traveling outward with some wavelength and are being perceived by the people at some frequency. When we take the wavelength and the frequency into account, we can determine that the waves are moving at some constant velocity. This velocity is the same no matter what direction those waves are traveling. So the person on the left hears the same wave as this person on the right. They perceive the same sound. But what happens if you start moving? Take the person on the right. She is moving towards the source of the sound at some velocity. We can define this velocity as u to help us distinguish it from the velocity of the waves, v. So now the waves are hitting her at a faster rate than they were than when she was stationary. The frequency of the waves has not changed, only her perception of them. So we can define this as an apparent frequency and label it as f prime. Now if the frequency has appeared to change, then so must the velocity appear to change. The wavelength does not change. We can take any point in this scenario and measure the wavelength and see that it has stayed the same. So if the frequency appears to change and the wavelength does not, then we must have some new apparent velocity with relation to the moving person, which we can call V prime. Now what we are really interested in here is the apparent frequency because that is what we can perceive. We can rearrange this equation to find the apparent frequency is equal to the apparent velocity divided by the wavelength of the wave. The apparent velocity is essentially the velocity of the wave added to the velocity of the moving person. This we can plug into our apparent frequency equation. As you may have figured out by now, we really like to get rid of variables if at all possible. We have a wavelength in our denominator. We know that wavelength is equal to velocity divided by frequency, so we can substitute that in. We get the equation for apparent frequency, and we can actually write this in two different ways. Let's look at this for a minute. If we are moving towards a sound, what happens to the frequency? It is actually larger than the emitted frequency. If the frequency increases, what happens to our sound? Remember that a higher frequency has a higher pitch. So if we are moving toward a sound, it will have a higher pitch. It will sound higher than if we are just standing in a stationary position. What about the person on the left? He is moving away from the source of the sound. Again, we will call this velocity u. The waves are now hitting him at a slower rate than they were when he was stationary. We won't go back through all the math, but if we look at our original relationship for the apparent frequency, we just want to subtract the mover's velocity from the wave velocity. From here we can reach an equation for apparent frequency for a mover moving in the same direction as the wave. Notice the only difference is that we subtract the two velocities instead of add them. Now here's something cool. What happens if the velocity of the mover is the same as the velocity of the wave? In this case, the ratio of velocities is equal to 1. If we plug that back into our equation, we get 1 minus 1, which gives us an apparent velocity of 0. What does this mean in terms of sound? Well, if the frequency equals 0, can you hear any sound? You can't. So if the ratio of the velocity of the moving object and the velocity of the wave equals 1, that person that is moving along with that wave cannot hear that sound.